Pick em pie, big gun Brian Petrie, giving out the lot. One is mortal, you know it won't miss. Gonna take a shot, dog lot, that's the underdog. Yeah, yeah they get the hunt. Send them home, that's KO or submission. Yeah, somebody done. Slime oh. ball, yeah, that's the parlay. We gon' make it known. Pick em pie from MMA tapes. Yeah, let's get it going. Yeah. Yeah. Ha, ha, ha. Whoo. Whoo. What's up with the what's up, babe? Huh? How we doing on this beautiful, gorgeous Tuesday night? Your boy's doing it early. Trying to get this out early. Trying to do things early. Problem with that is I don't have a lot of options for the Green Hammer. So at the top, I want to address the Green Hammer will be a separate video because the props are only like over-unders. They didn't really give me great props to work with. I'm really good. I need a winner. I came up short last week with Yergui getting knocked out in the first round for less than a minute, 38 seconds or whatever it was. Um, so I need, a, I need a win, right? I got the slime ball locked and loaded. <laughs> slime ball's there, babe. Okay, we're ready. We're slime forever. But uh, Green Hammer, separate video this week. I don't know. I, maybe I'll put it up like as a YouTube short. Uh, post on the social or something like that. It won't be like a full video, just a real quick breakdown of what the Green Hammer is because we're smashing that. Speaking of that, I should have had this queued up. This, again, your boy goes by the seam of his pants here. That's what he does. I got to give out a shout out. Oh, man. Mm, let me Let me see. Sorry, sorry, sorry. A lot of DMs. Here we go. 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 So there's a gentleman. Let me shout out his Twitter at the D white kid, Damon white. Okay. We've DM'd a few times. Good guy listens to this pod. Listen to Anakin Florina, you know, uh, a good supporter of your boy. I have MMA takes, uh, MMA takes podcast.com where you can go get all your merch, right? You can go get all the merch over there. I haven't plugged in a while because I haven't really pushed many t-shirts. Yada, yada. This beautiful gentleman, this gorgeous human being ordered a hat. Created a green hammer dad hat, right? Thought it was dope. Didn't order one myself, right? And he ordered one. And he came up and he ordered one months ago. And after a month or two, he goes, hey, uh, I ordered this hat, dude. Like, what's going on? I email Teespring, the company that prints it, because I don't do any of that. I don't print anything or whatever. And um, and I said, what's going on with the hat? They're like, you know, they kind of gave me the runaround. I, I text or I messaged them back saying, you know what, dude? I apologize. This is ridiculous. I, I can refund you. Did I re ask him refund? Maybe not. But anyway, I said, just cancel it. Just cancel it. Um, just cancel the order. I appreciate the support, man. But like, this is ridiculous. Like the most impatient person in the world when it comes to like ordering things, I get it, right? Cancel the order. And that was the last we talked. So like a month or two later, when was that last message? That was in April. Fuck me, dude. Three more months. He finally got it. I'll put, this, I'll put the picture up on the screen um, you know, he finally fucking got the hat. It looks dope. I'm happy for him, but that is absolutely egregious. So shout out Damon White for being a patient son of a bitch. If I create new shirts, you one's on the house. One's on the house for being a supporter, for being a good dude, for being patient, because God knows I don't have the patient bone in my body. I don't have it. And this guy has it. So if you're looking at the timestamp, you realize, hey, this is the pick em pod, right? Uh, this isn't a tight 40. You know, I usually keep the pick em pod at tight 40. We're going to do a little addressing. I was going to do a recap show because UFC 290 blew my dick off. A lot to talk about. But the Anik show, the Anik Florian um, show, show I'm on, little show you ever heard of it. They crushed the recap. I don't think I can add to that. I, I I came in at the tail end of it. I got to recap a little bit. I got to say my piece, but Anik and Kenny uh, were on fire. Go check that out. And they recapped one of the probably top five pay-per-views I've ever seen. Um, and I'm not just saying that recency bias. It, was, it had everything, stories, emotions, your boys tearing up, which we'll get to. Like, what the fuck is going on? Um, incredible, incredible night. So I'm going to do a couple recaps on that. Betting recap. I am down big. Um, the all, Vulcan obviously kind of saved my night a little bit, but not really because I'm still down, but whatever. And then uh, we'll get to the pickums of this card, which is a little weak. You know, you're coming off this great card. Now you got Holly Holm versus Myra Bueno Silva. Uh, main eventing, you know, it, you know, there's some good fights, there's some good plays. Um, we're locked and loaded. I think the slime ball is gonna fucking kill. Uh, I said that last week though, but um, 
Oh, boy, I get text messages. All right, listen. So before we, I need to start off the top. The reason this is going to go a little long is I need to talk to you guys. You know, that's why I like to recap shows because I feel like I'm not so pressed to be like a picks robot. You know, just give out the picks, just give out the picks. Uh, speaking about robots, I dropped on the live that I bought a boxing robot. Right, and I'll put that on the screen as well. <laughs> Your boy bought a boxing robot. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, haven't got it yet. It says it's going to either come July or August. It's like pre-order situation, but yeah, it's a boxing robot, <laughs> okay? That's what it is, and I can't wait to put videos out with that thing because I'm, I'm I'm super excited. Speaking about videos, this is, this is what I want to talk about. I was going to kind of go into the MMA Twitter drama that was dealing with some guys. I'm going to lay off that, you know, let them deal with that. I don't want drama, you know, in my life. I was going to talk about... Air Hawani's little bitch tweet, but I'm not going to do that because everyone doesn't like when I talk about Hawani because I'm the liar that lied about Hawani and, you know, everything like, you know, so it's just, it's just not worth it. I've been, I've been instructed to not discuss Hawani, so I'm not going to do that. You know, he's got legions of fans. They really die hard for him. So I'm going to lay off that as well. Uh, Tyson Fury versus Ngannou got announced. Let's start there, and then we'll go into the, the little personal stuff I have, and then we'll do the fights, okay? Recap, and then the pickums, right? Okay, so Tyson Fury versus Francis Ngannou got signed October 28th in Saudi Arabia. Both of them obviously making a bag, which 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 is what you like to see. You like to see guys um, win and, and make bags. And now I was wrong, and I'm, I'm a guy that's going to admit when he was wrong. I was dead wrong about Ngannou. I did not think, or <clears throat> I wasn't my point, let me let me try to phrase this so I'm not an idiot. I wasn't upset. Oh, I, don't, I guess that's not I guess that's not true either. I always knew he was gonna make money. I always knew there was an opportunity for him out there to go make a bag. I never thought he fumbled the bag. I think if you dig up some tweets, I'm probably pretty negative towards him, but it was never because I thought he wasn't gonna make money or whatever. I just thought. You, you can't call yourself the baddest man in the world when you go get butchered by Tyson Fury, which is what's going to happen. Tyson Fury is the best heavyweight boxer of this generation. He's undefeated for a reason. Naganyu isn't the most technical boxer in the world. He's got power, but does he have power with the boxing gloves on? It's a different kind of thing. It's a different kind of world. And man, I just, uh, I think Fury is going to take him out. So, you go in the boxing, something you've always wanted to do. You're getting a multi-million dollar payday, which I think you deserve, right? Never thought he didn't deserve the payday, um, but you're going to get butchered in there, right? And I could be wrong about that, but he not, might knock out Fury and set the world on fire. Don't think it's going to happen. I think Fury's absolutely going to butcher him, but, you know, crazier things have happened. So come October, you're going to get embarrassed by Fury. There's going to be people that are going to be clapping you, saying, good job. Or it can be like the Connor effect, where... Connor went out and beat Eddie after Floyd and then never really regained it because he's so rich. Now, Francis is going to be so rich. He's got the PFE, PFL deal. Not a lot of heavyweights sign the PFL. And the requirement for the PFL deal is if, if, if whoever he's fighting has to make him a minimum of $2 million. The PFL has got to make money, too. So they're paying Francis X amount of money. They're going to pay, let's say, Bo Green $2 million to fight Francis after coming to loss over Tyson Fury. How many people are going to be invested in buying that? Are they going to make their nut back? You know, I don't know what PFL's backing is. I don't know, like, who's, who, like, you know, obviously they're on ESPN. They do good numbers. I love the PFL. I enjoy the product. But, you know, they're paying Jake Paul, who's an equity member now. Now they got um, Francis Gagne on this huge deal. who's doing the Africa deal, which I think is amazing, you know, bringing African talent in. But I just don't know where they're going to get the money at to be paying his fighter or his opponents in uh, PFL two million bucks. I just, I don't know feasibly business, we're talking business, how that makes sense, especially after he gets butchered by Fury, he might lose esteem, and then after he gets butchered by Fury, is he going to get another boxing fight? Maybe he'll still retain his name, and like a Dylan White, or like an Anthony Joshua will be like, yeah, he's got a name, I'll go in there and I'll fucking butcher him too, show him this is an MMA, or we're going to get one of those guys coming to MMA, which could be a big fight, but again, then you got to open up your fucking checkbook and get these guys over. So, again, I don't know how the money's going to work out. I don't know if it's going to fail. I'm glad Naganyu is getting a huge payday. 
I hope it doesn't ruin his career, kind of like it did Conor McGregor, kind of like it did a lot of Floyd's opponents in the past. I mean, look at Victor Ortiz, look at Robert Guerrero. Those were never the same. Or fucking Marcus Maidana, they were never the same after they got the Floyd payday. You know what I mean? Marcus Maidana is 300 pounds right now. You know what I mean? He became a millionaire. He's like, fuck it, I'm out. Fought a couple more times, I'm out. Uh, hopefully that doesn't happen in Aganyu. Um, but I do think, regardless, I'm happy he got the money. He's going to get embarrassed by Tyson Fury, though. That's that's just point blank period. But, you know, they're going to Saudi Arabia. And the Saudis, you know, they got a lot of money. And I'm sure they're footing some of that bill over there. So, all right. So what I want to talk about personally, I was debating saying, talking about the second half of this. I, I don't know why I'm preambling so fucking long. Just get on with it, right? Because I'm kind of embarrassed to say it, but not really. So I put up a boxing video. And by the way, me boxing in the new gloves, that was Southpaw. Okay? Your boy's orthodox. Okay? I'm training Southpaw. I put, it up, put that video up to show I'm working on Southpaw. I was talking to the camera a little bit. You know, I don't need to put up a video of me doing orthodox to prove anything to you guys. Okay? Okay? I'm not that vain. All right, so there it is, right? But I was doing Southpaw, got new boxing gloves. What I want to talk about is I'm always on here shitting on companies about bad shipping or bad customer service, and I will literally look you in the face and tell you what companies not to go with because either the quality of the products bad or the shipping was terrible or customer service, whatever. I'm very, like, I don't write reviews online. I don't lampoon a company online or anything like that. Even with bad service, I tip. I'm that's kind of guy, but I will come on here and publicly shame them if I if I need to, right? Cleto Reyes, Mexico's finest, one of the very few boxing gloves I've never owned. Legendary gloves. Everyone, every pretty much um big Mexican fighter over the years. Many Pacquiao Warren exclusive in his career. Several fighters have ruined Cleto Reyes. You know, they're very, very famous. Yeah, I talked about this in Anakin Florian. You probably saw the gloves on there. Hit up Kenny for winning Japanese gloves. I've had a pair before. They're like gold, 12 to 16 months before you get any custom colors. It's insane. I'm not waiting that long. Kenny rec recommended Cleto Reyes. I ordered them on a Friday. I got big gun, uh, like, you know, screen printed on them. Ordered them Friday, kind of late on Friday, right? Get shipping on Saturday. Get them Monday, right? Via UPS. Coming from California. Now I go, there's no way they, because the uh, customization was 10 bucks. Usually it's 40. They had a sale. It was like July 4th sale, whatever, for 10 bucks. I'm like, there's no way they customize that. There's just no way because they ship so fast. They did. You saw them. Blown away. I cannot recommend Cleto Reyes' service enough. I've used the gloves a handful of times. They're just little 10 ounces for the bag. Incredibly comf uh, comfortable, awesome. Hands feel good. Um, they look fantastic. The smell of the smell of that fucking leather. I love. Couldn't say better things about this. That's leading me to the part that I didn't want to say. Is your boy went out and bought a boxing robot. He's been in the gym. He, you know, I'm down nine pounds. People saying, you know, I'm looking pretty trim. I'm dying now and dying nine pounds, right? I got about 90 more to go. But um, I've been putting work in the gym. And I had a meeting, not a meeting, excuse me, an appointment with my neurologist. Is that what? You, yeah, neurologist. Urologist is your dick. Neurologist is your brain. Didn't have an appointment with my dick doctor, but I did have an appointment with my neurologist. Old man, 100 years old. I go to him and I just started talking to him, right? And, and my blood pressure was 116 over 80, like a fucking Olympian, right? And, you know, I'm, I'm doing, you know, they put you through strength tests to see if you have MS and whatever, you know, because with brain injuries and blah, blah, blah. And we kind of talked and, and he said this to me before. He's like, I think it was just a fluke thing. I, I had a seizure 10 years ago. He's like, I think it was a fluke thing. I think whatever you go into your life, stress, whatever, I think that was what caused it. And it was, I mean, I was running myself wild. It was crazy what happened to me or what I was doing to myself those months leading up to the seizure. Haven't had one since, haven't even had uh, an almost one. And um, he said that, you know, and I kind of brought up, like, you know, I used to box, I used to do this. He's like, well, I'm never going to recommend head trauma. But he's like, I don't think if you go in and you work out and you get knocked in the head, you're going to fall and collapse or whatever, right? 
So after I posted that video of me boxing, I got hit up by a lot of local gyms saying, hey, dude, come here. I got the UFC gym in Maryville, Indiana. Some guy hit me up. That's three and a half hours away. That's basically Chicago. They hit me up. I was like, dude, come here. You can train for free. I got a couple local gyms or whatever. Hey, come spar here. Come do that, you know. And I'm like, oh, I got a fucking bounty on my head. Right. These guys want me to come to the gym, the knockoff old BP, the guy that's friends with Anik. You know what I mean? It's like, I got to get in fucking shape. But that excited me and that excitement rose up. And I see all the comments about this fat guy. What is he talking about? MMA. He's never trained a day in his life. He can't even touch his toe. You get all those, right? You get those comments, right? I had Chris Curtis shout me out, retweet my or my boxing video saying BP. I had some fucking slick hands back in that you guys don't even know. Some people saw that like as an insult, like he had slick hands. First off, yeah, I'm 36 out of shape with two kids. I haven't sparred in eight years. I used to be a fucking killer back in the day. You know what I mean? So what I'm thinking is, right, and I got a long time to do it. That's why I didn't want to bring it up on the podcast. But I think if I say it on the podcast right now, July fucking 11th, 823 on a Tuesday, I can hold myself to this. So I'm 36. My career, uh, because another thing is when I used to train all the time and that's what, that's what I want to do. Was I going to have been good? Would have been a career? I don't know, but I just want to fight. It got taken away from me because, you know, also I should have probably been, I've talked about this before. I I, I had working two jobs, going to school and had a demanding girlfriend who sucked the life out of me. So I should have put all those aside and just focused on what I want to do. I did not do that. Whatever. Anyway, 36 now, I know I'm not going to make a career out of this, obviously fighting, but I would love to get one. So that's the goal. I got a fucking $700 boxing robot. I'm going to get into shape in the garage first, and then I'm going to start going to these gyms, picking some things up, and I don't want an amateur fight, right? And that's that's not what I want. I don't even care if I get out. The money, whatever they pay me for the pro fight, I'll fucking throw it on, you know, an underdog in the next card, whatever. I just need to have an 0-1-1 or 1-0 pro record. I want to be able to sit in front of this camera and say, I'm a professional fighter. No matter win, lose, or draw, that's what I want, and that is what I'm going for before I'm 40 years old. I'm 36, going to be 37 August 4th, so we got three years. Three years to get in shape. Now, I know that's why it's like everyone's like, dude, three years fucking crazy. It could happen next year. It could happen 38, 39. What, it doesn't matter. But that is the end goal for me right now is to get one. I got I got this burning feeling of getting one, right? And I have a hard time going to sleep at night. This is, this is probably going to be a little too much information. I have a hard time going to sleep at night. So you know what I do to help me go to sleep? I imagine I'm a fighter and my career is different and I'm on either Rogan's podcast or I'm talking about my career on like any, like that is something that burns inside of me that I don't know if I ever would have achieved that without the brain injury. Cause I don't think I had the work ethic for it. I've told you that, but one pro fight against another guy who's hopefully a bum, if not, whatever, <laughs> I think that's possible before I'm 40 one and done. Oh, and one or one and oh, that's it. Get the professional record. Be a pro fighter for that one night. That's what I want. I've been thinking about this forever. I was driving today at work, driving all the way out east, long drive, and I'm like, holy shit, this is kind of what I want to talk about on the podcast. This is, this is what I want to talk about. This is what I want to do. I don't know if it's because I bought the boxing robot or not, and you know, I'm getting compliments by pro fighters about my hands and fucking Hall of Fame coaches, Ray Longo, and yeah, yeah, I don't know. But I'm like, holy shit, this is this is something that I, I kind of want to do. And uh, I'm, you know, again, we're a little bit ways away. I got to get in way better shape. I got to get in the gym. I got to put miles on. I got, you know, I got to do a lot. But again, July 11th right here, this is this is what I want to do. This is what I'm working for, towards because my, my end goal is doing this full time, staring at this camera, podcasting, MMA takes, whatever the platform may be getting paid to do this is something that I, that's what I want my career to be. And that is the mega ultimate goal. But my side quest goal, my burning goal, my goal that is been inside me since I was 17. When that's when I started getting the heavy 18, 17, 18, when I got the heavy bag in the garage 
and I was getting in fights all through growing up. And I said, this is what I want to do. I need to get one. I did a boxing. I did a boxing uh, tournament once. I competed in a shitty boxing tournament. I got the medal over there. And I boxed the same kid twice. It was a four-man tournament because that's the only people that were in our weight. It was amateur. And, uh, you know, it was, <laughs> I mean, it wasn't a tough man, but it might as well have been. And, uh, yeah, I paid 75 bucks to enter that. And I got a shitty little fucking whatever. Um, but I need to, I need to get that pro MMA thing on my record. Imagine if I do that and I run into like a guy like Bo Nickel or, or, or Bo Nickel version of Bo Nickel. Who's like just coming off like an Olympic wrestling team or, or tryouts or whatever. And he's like, yeah, my, my pro debut. And I just get fucking hammered. <laughs> oh, but I need it. I need it. I need the one. I've done a lot in my life so far. They got an incredible wife. I got a good life. I got, you know, my mom is, is amazing. She's, you know, going through a lot. Life is short. After this past year with all the death and all the turmoil I went through, you know, I felt like something was missing. I didn't know what it was. And this might not be the answer, but I think it is because this is something I've wanted for almost 20 years. I've been thinking about it. And it kept getting put on shelves and kept getting put aside because of certain different things. But Oh man, I, I, I just, it's a, it's, you know, I, I don't care about getting hurt. I don't care about, and I just need to get in shape and get in there and just get the one. I need the one man. Cause no matter what I'll be, if I don't ever make it if we're doing this on the microphone, I'll be sitting here at 80 years old talking about MMA for free. Like I'm doing now. I don't have sponsors, right? I mean, I get, you know, Anakin Florian, I got the huge deal with them. That's great. But you know, I'm, I'm doing this cause I love it. Right. And that's kind of what the fighting thing is, is I gotta get fucking one, man. I gotta get one. Woo! All right, real quick. That was a little longer than I want it. 290. Real, real quick recap. Uh, Volkanovski looked amazing. He blew me away. His striking, his stance switches. There's a ton of better, smarter people who were breaking down what he did better than me. It was one of the most beautiful striking MMA displays I've ever seen. Moreno Pantoja, unbelievable. You got to go Pantoja Raval. I don't want to see a rematch right away. Let Moreno go fight maybe Amir Abazi, get another win, then we can rematch it. But they've already fought three times. Need new fresh blood. Give me Raval Pantoja, another rematch there. Uh, Whitaker, Duplessis, goddamn wrong about DDP. That blew up my night. Slime ball down. 450 bet on uh, Whitaker down. I hit Volkanovski by third round KO, TKO, which was amazing that saved my night but i'm still way down like 3.7 what i have written down here 3.78 units 378 dollars i'm down who that uh whew, that's that, that hurts hooker's amazing broke his fucking face and his arm incredible fight <clears throat> people are disagreeing with the judges uh, it, it, you know that second round was fucking close boys bo nickel <clears throat> excuse me a fucking star right he's him I liked the way he went out there and finished. He's only going to get better. Uh, sky's the limit for Bo. Robbie Lawler making me cry. Pantoja making me cry. Not really cry, but well up a little bit. Robbie, I've been there with him pretty much day one of his career. Pantoja going, Dad, are you proud of me now? I grew up with a real shitty dad. Uh, that fucking hit me home. You got Madalena canceled. Denise Gomes knocking out Yeragui in 38 seconds. Unbelievable. You got uh, Alonzo Metafield almost retiring Jimmy Crute. I think Alonzo Metafield now needs to move up, not move up, but move up and uh, start fighting some big dogs. I think, you know, this guy's interesting now. Um, he's fighting with a lot of confidence. You know, his takedown defense is improving and cardio's starting to get there and big, big power. Now he's got a fucking choke, apparently. Uh, Tashira Tyra looked amazing over Chirez. You know, he got dropped, came back. Dominant on the ground like we thought he would. Victor Vitor Petrino, my guy. Uh, this guy just dominated Martin Practico. I had him by KO, one by sub. Missed on that bet. Uh, Cameron Simon by Terrence Mitchell. Mitchell, Cameron Simon just, we all knew that was going to happen. Terrence Mitchell, not ready for the UFC. Shannon Ross getting absolutely knocked out. I mean, dead. Shot dead by Shannon Ross. And then uh, Kamala Kirk versus Esteban Rebibix. An incredible fight there by Rebibix. Um, you know, he showed up, his UFC debut came up short and said, you know what? No, no, no. I'm actually way fucking better than that. And I'm going to go against a guy, Camelo Kirk, who looked fucking great at 155. 
And I'm going to go against him, and I'm going to come out, and I'm going to fucking look unbelievable here. Gave a lot of takedowns in that first round, got dominated, but came back. Cardio's there, power's there. Unbelievable. All right. Fight night. Holly Holm versus Marabueno Silva. Not the best card. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time. I'm not going to get into the weeds too much on some of these fights, but um, yeah, not the best card. I just printed my new card off because Jack Dalla Della Della Madalena just got added to this card, which is which beefs it up. Um, I don't even know who he is fighting. Spoiler alert, I'm picking Jack, right? Don't even know this guy. I'm gonna obviously cap him more, but it doesn't matter. I already bet Jack and you know, he might be in a parlay, you know. Don't, don't know. First fight of the night, Melsic Bakdasarian, minus 165 versus Tucker Lutz, plus 140. I'm done betting Tucker Lutz. I'm done. This guy's burned me in the past. I've mortal locked him. Sorry, I mortal locked him. I just ate before I came on here. Mortal locked him. I've done a lot with him. And he absolutely looks like garbage. Melsic Bakdasarian is a guy, a great kickboxer. People say, just take him down, just take him down, just take him down. Easier said than done. Minus 165. I like Melsic here. I think he's going to piece up Tucker Lutz. I think Tucker Lutz does not have the best takedowns in the game. His striking is very pushy. It's not that good. I think Melsic can piece him up with kicks with punches on the outside. Don't know if he can get a finish, but I like Melsic. Like him big here. Gave him on the Anakin Florian as my extra pick here. That's a slime ball cannon number one. Right off the bat, slime ball cannon. Remember, no green hammer. If you skipped all the first part, no green hammer till later in the week because the uh, this is early in the week and the odds are not not. Uh, Austin Lingo, plus 180. My dog's barking there. Kids are home. Versus, how do you fucking say this guy's name? This is a hell of a name to say. Mes- Mesquale? Mesquale? Mesquizel? Costa. I'm going to go Costa. He's minus 210. Costa, this line surprised me a little bit. I know Austin Lingo isn't the... Uh, Best guy in the UFC, his two wins are, you know, Luis Sedano, Jake and Kilbert, Jake and Kilbert, not good. And he got outworked and out just grind it by Nate the Train. But who doesn't, right? Really close fight with, uh, not close fight, excuse me, I don't know about Yuzif Yus- Yus- Zulaw. But Costa debuted against Diego Moises and looked good, like, in a little bit. Outstruck Moises, but Moises got four takedowns on him in the submitted him. I know this is a, that was a debut. He's young. He's a young kid. People kind of like him. He's coming from Mexico, and uh, Viva La Mexico is big right now. But you're hanging plus 180 on Austin Lingo, a guy who can box a little bit. You know, I got to worry, gotta worry about the takedown. But I'm going to take a shot at Lingo at plus 180. I think it's too wide. I think people like Costa. They look at against Tiago Moises. That's a hell of a debut against Tiago Moises. But he, you know, he, I, I thought he looked good. But I think Austin Lingo is just kind of a solid vet. He's two and two in the UFC. This is good, not going to be a walk in the park for Costa. I think Austin Lingo has good fights. He doesn't get finished often. He's durable. He's durable on his feet. Um, you know, the ground game is obviously a question mark. But I like Austin Lingo here um, at plus one eighty. I mean, you're giving me a big number, babe. I'm going to take a big number. Estella Nunez, plus 180 as well, versus, oh, that's another fucking name here. John Anik would kill me if you watch this show right now. Victoria Dudakova. I think I nailed that. Victoria Dudakova, minus 210. Dudakova, which is a fucking dope last name. You think about it. Make it, not making UFC debut. Excuse me. She was on the contender series, got outstruck, but landed four takedowns. Big, big Russian grappler. Is she from Russia? I hope I didn't fuck that up. Yeah, eh, maybe. I don't know. Um, against Estela Nunez. Estela Nunez, who looks like a young Cheyenne, uh, Cheyenne Baszler for all the hardcores out there. Good striking, but just hasn't been able to fucking put it together, man. Like 0 3 in the UFC. You know, she was piecing up. Connor Losey, and then got taken down five times and then submitted. She was piecing up Sam Hughes, got taken down, majority decision. Piecing up Sam Hughes in the first round, I should say, then completely fell off a cliff. And then Yasmin Yurigi just knocked her out, you know, in, 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 the, in the last fight. And Yurigi obviously got slapped by, by Denise Gomes, but I will, I will offer up this. Denise Gomes does have a neck tattoo. So does the loss even really count for Yerigi? That's something to ponder on, you know, ponder on that. But uh, Estella Nunez, listen, good on the feet, had a lot of hype coming in, but she gets taken down. Dudakova, obviously, it works the ground game. She's undefeated. I like Dudakova here. This could be a good piece. I know coming off the contender series, we don't know a lot about her, but minus 210 isn't the craziest number in the world. Give me Dudakova. Huh? Give me Dudakova there. By probably decision, maybe a, maybe a ground finish, maybe a submission or something like that. I'll have to look a little deeper into that one. Open up this brain just a little more on that one. But give me Dudikova. And that's the last time I'm going to say her name. Because even if I'm mispronouncing it, 
It's a really fun name to say. All right, next up, you got Evan Elder, minus 295 versus Geraldo Valdez, plus 245. Valdez is a wild man. This guy already has three fights in the UFC, come from the contender series. This guy already has a little bit of a following in the UFC just because of just the wildness that he brings. The boy's crazy, right? Got the knockout win over Patrick White in the contender series. Got outstruck, landed some takedowns, but got the knockout win in round two. Then Frivola steamrolled him, landed 60 strikes, knocked him down four times. And then Natan Levy took him down six times and just pieced him up on the feet as well. So he's fighting some decent competition, minus Patrick White. Now he's getting Elvin Elder, who I feel like is better than his UFC record. He's 0-2 in the UFC. Preston Parsons just outmanned him, outworked him, outbodied him essentially, right? And then Nazim Sadikov, who's fighting later on this card, that fight was very close. He outstruck Nazim. Um, but it got stopped by a cut. It was an absolute dog fight. Both landed a takedown. Um, both hurt each other on the feet, but the, ultimately the cut led to Evan Elder losing that fight. Very close fight. Could have won against Nas, who I, uh, I hold in high regard. We'll get to him later. Um, so I think Evan Elder is, is better than his record suggests, and Vegas is smart, right? Vegas is smart with it. He's minus 295, a little heavy. Valdez is a wild boy. He can grapple a little bit. His chin isn't the best. Elvin, uh, Elvin, Evan can scrap a little bit on the feet, but I, he likes to take the fight to the ground. Um, give me Evan Elder, minus 295. It's not what I'm running to. He's not on a slime ball parlay. Come Saturday, that might be like a really good-looking bet to do, maybe live or something. You're like, oh, I got some I got some bullets to fire off. Evan Elder's a good look, but uh, minus 295 is a little high. I mean, and if you love Evan Elder, get him now because that might be climbing, although Valdez, he does have, he does have some... Some real loyal people that really like the guy. So maybe, you know, maybe they'll be loading up on him. I don't know. Next up, you got Alex Munoz minus 150 versus Carl Deaton the third. And you better say the fucking third, bitch. Plus 130. Um, Carl Deaton debuted. And I remember capping this guy. I remember, I remember looking at him when he fought Joe Selecki. He landed one strike on Joe Selecki. Joe Selecki landed two strikes on him. It went to the second round. So basically the first round, Joe took him down, tried to submit him, landed a couple strikes, couldn't. Took him down in the second round, rear naked choke, over. Carl Deaton, this guy seems like he's like a superhero outside of being an MMA fighter, right? That just seems like his personality. Then you got Alex Munoz, again, coming, he was on the uh, contender series. He beat Nick Newell. You guys remember Nick Newell? Newell? Am I saying his name right? He had the uh, one arm, right? One arm MMA fighter, got a shot on the contender series back in 2018, and and Munoz outstruck him barely. Landed four takedowns, won the fight, got the contract. I think he was a team alpha male guy at the time. Don't know if he still is. Then he doesn't fight for two years. Then he comes back against Nas Haparas, gets outstruck, gets outworked, looks terrible. Then he comes back against Luis Pena. Very, very close fight. Maybe he should have won or four takedowns, but Luis Pena outstruck him. Very close fight. That was back in 2021. So this guy's taking two years off, year off now, two years off again. He's going against Carl Deaton, who if Carl Deaton was like a plus 200 something right here, I'd probably take a shot on the superhero. I'd take a shot on the mask man. Um, but since it's only plus 130, I don't think so. Give me the chalk and Munoz. I think Munoz is athletic. I think he can do some good things in there. I think Carl Deaton probably shouldn't be in the UFC. Got the call up, took the fight on short notice. So they're giving him another fight. But the Joe Selecki fight was, was kind of an embarrassing performance, in my opinion. So give me uh, Alex Munoz, minus 150. A little bit of a low number. Again, I thought Munoz would be high. That be might uh, be something to look into to play. That's probably going to be a playable thing for me come fight night right now. I'm not going to parlay him because he's been off so many, so long. All right, Tyson now, plus 310 versus a debutant, I believe. Azat Maxim. Azat Maxim, minus 410. So I looked at this guy, right? And he looks good, right? He's got everything you want from a guy from a stand. You know what I mean? From one of those countries. He's got everything you want. Making his UFC debut, right? Young guy, 125 pounder, southpaw. Great record. Is he undefeated? I think he's undefeated, right? Yeah, 16 and 0. Beating everybody. Decent competition. Nothing great. But Tyson Nam has been in there with some fucking dogs, right? Went to a decision with Sergio Pettis, who is killing a belt to a very good fighter. Went to a decision with 
Kai Car France knocked out uh, Zaruk Alashev, which is a great name that I can pronounce. Knocked out Jerome, Jerome Rivera, but who fucking doesn't? Had a scrap with uh, Matt Schnell that he dropped a decision to. Knocked out Odie Osborne and dropped, finally got finished in the UFC for the first time. Got finished by Bruno Silva, who looked to be on fire that night. Landed. No takedowns. Dropped Tyson. Jumped right to a rear naked choke. Tyson Nam's takedown offense is 100%. But you're like, who is he fighting that's going to take him down? Sergio's a striker. No takedowns. Kai Car France a striker. No takedowns. Zaruk Adeshev, kickboxer, no takedowns. Jerome Rivera, maybe he's got a takedown in there, but not really. Matt Schnell can mix in a takedown, didn't really go for one. Odie Osborne, another striker. So he's fighting strikers, but you're hanging three fucking ten on him. I this is the only the only fight I don't have marked. Um, and I want to take a poke at Nam. I want to take a poke at Nam, but there's sometimes where he does fall flat. I mean, it's just it's just the way it is. He doesn't pull the clip when he needs to, and he is a powerful guy for 125. He's got a great chin. You can't finish him on the feet. Take down the fence. Obviously, he's at 100%, but he got dropped by Bruno, which is kind of crazy. Maybe a fluke thing here. Again, this is maybe a different kind of grappling because he did not really, hasn't really fought grapplers. You'll see, I'm going to go with, with, uh, with, with Maxim minus 410. I hate it. I hate myself for picking that. I may switch that. I may switch that, but, uh, you know, Tyson Nam is old, too, at 125, 21-13-1. Getting dropped by Bruno Silva, maybe that was a thing to come for, you know, future fights, and this Maxim guy is 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 on tape pretty fucking good. All right, next up, you got Alan Perez. Alan Perez, Alan Perez, Alan, how do you say it, versus Ashley Evan Smith. I thought Ashley Evan Smith retired. Plus 165 uh, for Smith, one, minus 195 for Perez. Not going to spend too much time in this fight. Uh, let me look up when's the last time Ashley Evans Smith has won a fight. So she lost. She hasn't fought since 2020. Lost a big norm decision. Lost to Andrea Lee decision. Beat Beck Rawlings back in 2018. Right? Unanimous decision. Outstruck her. Landed a takedown. Looked pretty good in that fight. Landed 116 strikes. Good for her. Lost to Sarah Marais by Ombar. Lost to Caitlin Vieira, which is another big name. Then her last win before that was Veronica Hardy. By KO and then Moreau, uh, Marion Renault back in 2016. So 2016 was her most active year with two fights. She had two, well, she had two and 17, both losses. Came back in 18, came back in 19, now 20. Last fought in 2020, 2020, coming off two losses. <sighs> 1987, 36 years old. I feel like this is her last fight in the OC, probably. Maybe her last one on the contract. Don't know if they're going to resign her. Her record is, what, nine and six, nine and five. All on Perez lost to Steph Yeager by sub rear naked choke last time out. Looked pretty good on the feet. Laying a few takedowns. Eggers kind of slick on their back. <sighs> I'm going to go Perez. And I feel bad about it. Now, you know, I think Evan, Evan Smith is washed. I think she's just, she's not in it. Her head's not in. I think she should go out there. All on Perez. Alan Perez. However you say her fucking name. Aylin. Aylin Perez is 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 a go-getter. She's going to go out there. She's going to be aggressive. I don't think Ashley Evan Smith is ready for this youth, this youth to jump on her. Uh, give me uh, Alien Perez. All right, next up, Jack Della Madalena versus Bazel Hafez. Plus 450, Jack Della Madalena right now as a Tuesday. And I already took the bet. He is a minus 600, which I think is a little low. I'm going to hop on the DraftKings real quick, see if it's moved at all. It is 625, so it's moving. People are jumping on it. I jumped on it myself. Um, let me go to, cause I have not looked up. I was saving this for the podcast. I have not looked up the guy he's fighting. I don't know his style. I don't know anything. By the way, Jack Dumoulin is my pick and he is my send him home. Cause that's how much confident I have in Jack. All right. Vazil Hafez, eight and three and one. All right. Fighting out of Pennsylvania, born in the United States, 31 years old, 5'11", welterweight. Seems like pretty good sized dude on his topology picture, right? He's flexing a little bit. He's got some tattoos. Beefy boy, not much of a chest, but some good traps and shoulders. You know, looks like a strong guy, right? And let's look at it. So right hand win uh, back in uh, 2023, back in February. Knocked hand, right hand. That's all it says is right hand. Knock, guess knocked a guy out right hand. He break. Evan cuts his right hand in round three in Fury FC. Uh, he main event at that. Split decision went over Anthony Ivey, who, who's a vet. Lost to Evan cuts before that. So he rematched Evan cuts. It was a split decision he got back. They fought in the CFFSC. 
Christian Saval, he won by triangle choke. He's 8 0. Christian, what have you done since then? You're 8 1. Another beefy guy with some majestic chest there. Canadian boy. He just fought for a draw last time out against a guy 3 1. So, man, that's a weak record. He lost to Richard Williams by split. And he lost to Delonzo. D'Alonzo Jackson by unanimous decision. So what I'm seeing here is, is, is his record. Guys, he's fought not too bad. He lost to a guy who's 3-0, who's 4-0 now, but he hasn't fought since 2019 on D'Alonzo. Looks like a wrestler to me. Uh, Jeremiah Wells, he took to a draw. He fights in the UFC. That's a very good, nice little fight for him over there. Lost to Richard Williams by split. What is Richie Williams doing now? 1-0. He's only fought Bazell back in 2018. Retired after that fight. Um... And then, but what I'm seeing here is he's, is he's never been finished, right? Hasn't fought the elite guys, but he hasn't been finished. So that's, that's a positive. With that being said, Jack Della Malena is on a different level. His boxing, the way he chooses his punches, the guy just wants to fight, supposed to fight last week, have three different opponent changes, whatever the fuck. Give me Jack Della Malena. Sign ball with Canada at minus 600. That line's going to climb. Props to Basil for stepping up. Hopefully this actually happens. The other guy had a brain thing. Hopefully he gets that fixed. But hopefully this fight happens. I need to see three name Jack fight. Give me Jack Dumbledore. Next up, Terrence McKinney, plus 125 versus Nazim. Sadikov, minus 145. All these picks that I make right now are on the Anakin Florian. We're at 41 minutes. So we're over a tight 40, which I like to keep it. So I'm going to not rifle through, the, through these or whatever, but I'm going to, you know, I've already said my piece on these. I don't want to keep repeating myself. And, you know, that's... My wife says I repeat myself a lot. I'm trying not to do that anymore. All right. Nazim, Ray Longo guy. I think the kid's really good. He's 8-1, and one, I believe. Um, look on the contender series. Look at against Evan Elder, which was a dog fight. He's fighting Terrence McKinney. I like Terrence McKinney. Terrence McKinney is extremely explosive, powerful, but, but he's a one-round fighter, and that's the truth. He's a one-round fighter. He's going to have to blitz... Nazim, last time he didn't blitz and got knocked out by Bon Freem, and he said that people were trying to change my style. I felt weird. You know, he kind of blamed other people for it. His style is blitzing. He kind of needs to adopt maybe a Yoel Romero style, maybe a little more accurate, but Yoel blitzes, takes breaks. Blitzes, take breaks. Terrence McKinney has good wrestling. He can rely on that. He has big power, right? But he rushes too much in the first round, and then cardio's just gone. He doesn't know how to maintain it. So he could easily jump out and knock out Nazim in this first round. Nas got dropped by Evan Elder. Has a great chin, though. It's a tank in there. Good striking himself. Crafty left hand. Good movement. Been training with killers. I think he was out in Vegas for Favola, the finish camp. Longo's going to be out there. Longo's guys always have good cardio. They're always in your face. Terrence McKinney's 1-0. He's 1-0 against Longo guys. You know, he got Favola quick. You know, a year or two ago. Um, but I like Nas. I like Nas. He's my more lock as well. And this is not a fucking homer pick. Don't even start with, you're picking him because of Ray Longo. No. I'm picking him because I think he's the best value at minus 145. He's also a slime ball candidate. And I think this dude is going to win this fight. I think he can finish Terrence as well. If it gets out of the first round, Terrence fades. And I like uh, I like Nas here. I like Nas to win. That's it. Mortal lock. Take it to the bank. Don't hit me up in the comments saying you're a fucking homer. Don't do it. You can do it. I don't care. Otman Azatar versus Francisco Prado. Otman plus 100 versus Prado minus 120. Otman is the guy who got kicked out of the UFC and then like the king of Morocco or whoever said, hey, take a second thought, UFC. Brought him back. He tried to smuggle in potatoes and COVID, private island, fight island, whatever the fuck. Anyway, last time out, he fought Matt Favola, ran into the steamroller's right hand, got knocked out. Guy's got big powers. 13-1, and one, uh, grappling, question mark. Prado, super young, debuting in the OC against Steamrollarkey. Got taken down, got beat up, but did not quit, did not get finished. He's from that Argentina scene that I don't trust. Those jungle fights, I don't trust. I just don't trust them. So I'm going Ottman here. Ottman probably by knockout is what I'm going to play. I don't think I'll play this fight straight. That has a dog play, though, on Ottman. Barely. Puppy dog. But I like Ottman by KO. Um, and I think he's going to catch Prado probably within the first two rounds. He has to. If not, 
load up on Prado. This is a really good live betting spot because I think Ottman's going to look good in the first round, right? I think if he doesn't get caught like he did against Favola, he'll look good. And then the line will swing, and then he maybe will gas, and you can look at Prado, the younger guy, a little more while we're on that guy. Kenny was on Prado. I'm an Ottman. Let's go. Big Norm, Norm or Dumont, minus 140 versus Chelsea Chandler, plus 120. Uh, I'm on Big Norm here. Norm or Dumont against Chelsea Chandler. Norm or Dumont's fought everybody. She doesn't look great, but she gets wins done. Chelsea Chandler, 209. Stockton girl, you know, she's got that, you know, the Stockton thing to her. But I just was underwhelmed by her performance. She's still a little green. I think Norma Dumont's going to take her decision. I think she's going to win. If the line was way off and, and we had Chelsea Chandler at plus 180, plus 200, you're taking a poke at Chelsea Chandler. Plus 120, a little too low for me. Give me big Norm. Uh, and remember, always remember, I know chicks, okay? I'll prove it in the main event. I know chicks. How about Durayev versus Jung Yoon Park? Durayev plus 130, Jung Yoon Park minus 150. The Iron Turtle. Goddamn. Durev, you know. Hello? Okay, this is dog. That is dog. He's my dog shot. Dog lock, dog shot. Let go. Jung Young Park. Fun name to say. The Iron Turtle. Great nickname. Durable. Tough. But he just doesn't. I don't like the way he fights. He fights to win a decision. Durev, Chinny is all fuck, right? He's Chinny. Outside the UFC, he's been Chinny aggressive explosive good grappler can punish you when he wants to when he's on his game he's tough jung Young park hard to take down hard to look good against right because he wants to clinch you wants to put you against the cage he's gonna work his shitty takedowns i don't think that's gonna work against durab durab wants to be in the clinch he wants to be in that brawl i think jung Young park needs to keep distance and strike from the outside he's bigger than durab and i think you know he needs to clip from the outside i don't think all this crashing and wrestling is not going to be for park i think he knows that however I think Durayev is going to wrestle. I think he's getting on top. I think he's going to look good. Kenny and I are both on Durayev. I believe Kenny put an extra unit on Durayev as well. Uh, at that dog money. That guy went savage mode on me. Uh, but this is my dog lock. Dog lock at plus 130. I think that's a nice little dog to play. Um, I have not played that right, right now. I, I might jump on it. But I also think the line might move in my favor. So I'm going to play it out. Next up, Holly Holm. Minus 170 versus Mario Mono uh, Holly Holm. This girl does main events, fight nights in the Apex. They just love throwing her there, right? I know a lot of fans do not like this card. They're they're gonna maybe skip this card, right? I won't be one of those people, but I'm, uh, you know, it is it's not it's not the best card. Okay, let's just be honest with you, it's not. Next week we're in England, baby. We're in London, England, and then the week after that, Salt Lake City, baby. That's let's bring it out. Next week after that, Nashville, and I'm gonna be in that house. Uh, Holly Holm wins this fight. Because Silva just does not do enough. She wants to get the fight to the ground. She's found her love of jiu-jitsu lately, taking arms, taking legs. Um, not going to work against Holly. Holly likes to wrestle herself. I want the old Holly home. Head kick Holly. I want her standing in the ground. I want her st- keeping that long southpaw range, switching stances, firing kicks up. Silva, no volume. Is going to rush to get to this ground. Don't think she will. I think Holly wins a decision. I don't think it's going to be the best fight in the world. Give me Holly minus 170. Taking her. If you're going to play that player by decision. All right. Recap. Dog lock. Albert Durayev. Mortal lock. Nazim. Nas. Sadikov. Send them home. Three named Jack, baby. Jackie G. Jack Della Madalena. And then we got the slime ball parlay coming in at plus 216. 216. You got to say with the list. Nas, Mortal Lock, he's in there. Jackie D's in there. And Melsic Bagdasarian's in there. 216, we're getting winners. I got that at when Jack, I already placed it. So if you're in the MMA Takes betting group, go track that bet because Jack is moving up. When he moves up, the slime ball won't be plus 216 anymore. But right now, I got it at plus 216. Ooh. All right? That's a winner. We need fucking dubs. All right. 50 minute, tight 50, not really. Sorry about rambling in the beginning. I feel like I haven't done a recap show and I haven't done anything. I had to get it off my chest. It's good. It's good to get things off your chest every once in a while, you know? So, Brian PJ MMA on Twitter. Go rate and review the show on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, whatever it's called. You're killing on the Spotify. I get 85 reviews on Spotify. That's dope. I'm 4.8, so someone didn't give me five stars. I mean, I'm a five star man. Anyway, doing on uh, Apple, I got uh, 71. Let's get out to 75. Can we please? Can we pretty please? 
And then uh, sub hit that fucking sub button. You guys are the best. We got the 1,400. Didn't even get to celebrate. Completely forgot. I did send out a tweet. But 1,400 subs. Incredible. We're keeping the ball rolling. We're keeping the good times rolling. We're keeping everything rolling. I don't know how to end shows. I don't. I need to just throw up like, I need to make like an ending screen, like a video screen just to end shows because I don't know how to fucking do it. But what I do know how to do is appreciate every single fucking one of you because I do. I let go.